Yeah. All right. Um, good afternoon. Uh, I'll start off, obviously, with an update um, from Gaza. The Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs reports that mass displacements across the Gaza Strip continues in very, very large numbers. Uh, the cumulative number of displaced people increased by 30 percent just over the last 24 hours, now totaling more than 338,000, of whom over two-thirds are taking shelter in schools run by UNRWA. The UN Relief and Works Agency says that nearly 218,000 internally displaced people are sheltering in 92 of their schools in all areas of the Gaza Strip. In Gaza, more than 2,500 units have been destroyed or severely damaged and rendered uninhabitable, while nearly 23,000 others have sustained moderate to minor damage. At least 88 educational facilities have been struck, including 18 UNRWA schools, two of which were being used as emergency shelters for displaced people, as well as 70 uh, Palestinian Authority schools. This means that for the sixth consecutive day, more than 600,000 children have had no access to education in a safe place in Gaza. Ocha as a Gaza sole power plant has run out of fuel and was forced to stop functioning, triggering, triggering an immediate blackout, which continues throughout the Strip. This follows Israel's halt of its electricity and fuel supplies to Gaza on October 8th. A water crisis is looming in UNRWA emergency shelters and across the Gaza Strip due to damaged infrastructure, lack of electricity needed to operate pumps and desalination plants, as well as limited supply of water in local markets. Water supplies cannot be replenished due to the total blockade uh, of the Strip by Israeli authorities. Fuel cannot be brought in, and Israeli water suppliers are no longer delivering water to Gaza. Uh, humanitarian agencies continue to face major constraints in providing humanitarian assistance. The insecurity is preventing safe access to impacted areas and warehouses. Despite the challenging conditions, humanitarian workers have provided some assistance, including in the distribution of fresh bread to 137,000 people, the delivery of 70,000 liters of fuel to water and sanitation facilities, and the activation of psychosocial helplines. Yesterday, the Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, Martin Griffiths, allocated $9 million from the Central Emergency Response Fund to urgently uh, respond to relief efforts. UNRWA adds that 12 of its personnel have now been killed since October 7th. Uh, turning to Afghanistan, where um, our humanitarian colleagues are telling us that they are continuing to assess the impact of the earthquake that hit the country yesterday. As of yesterday, one person has been killed and an estimated 140 were injured by the second earthquake. Nearly 17,000 people have been directly impacted by the first earthquake. Our humanitarian colleagues note that damaged housing, plus the fear of returning home due to persistent aftershocks, have resulted in several informal sites having sprouted across Herat City. Uh, the response continues, and our international colleagues are working uh, with local partners to support impacted communities. Uh, the International Organization for Migration distributed aids to 930 families in the affected area sites in Herat. Uh, that are hosting, in Herat City, which is hosting families that were displaced by the earthquake. This includes shelter assistance to more than 700 families whose homes were completely destroyed by the quake. IOM has also provided four ambulances to regional hospital in Herat City to transport injured people to the provincial health facilities. A UN Refugee Agency distributed solar lamps and hygiene kits, among other critical supplies, and is working to ensure that people with disabilities Older people and households headed by women receive support tailored to them. UNHCR says that plans are underway to deliver psychosocial support to help people affected by the earthquake overcome trauma. For its part, uh, the UN Children's Fund distributed more than 500 blankets and tents for, to, for temporarily health, temporary health care. The World Food Program has dispatched more than 81 tons of food and tomorrow will be joined here by the acting humanitarian uh, coordinator for Afghanistan, Daniel Endres, who will speak to you more about the humanitarian response. Um, and yes, we're also trying to get you somebody from the region uh, to speak to you about uh, Gaza. 
Uh, the Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed is in Marrakesh in Morocco for the World Bank and IMF meetings. This morning, uh, she gave opening remarks at the breakfast roundtable jointly hosted by the Open Society Foundation and the Rockefeller Foundation and attended by governments, ministers, and philanthropies. Attendees discussed reform proposal to create greater fiscal space for development, climate resilience, and sought to strengthen the coalition around the proposals to drive action during and following the annual meetings. Ms. Mohammed emphasized the human cost of the slow progress in implementing agreed reforms, noting that 3.3 billion people live in countries where the cost of debt service now exceeds spending on education or health. The Deputy Secretary General also attended the Development Committee of the IMF and World Bank on behalf of the Secretary General, noting uh, to its members that the global community is not meeting the ambitions of the Sustainable Development Goals, um, and called on partners to implement the Secretary General's SDG stimulus to fuel faster progress and finance information in key areas, including food, energy, and digital technology. She welcomed the steps taken by the bank to reform through its evolution roadmap uh, while urging board members to support further and faster change. This morning, the Security Council heard from Parfait um, Onanga Nyanga, our special representative to the African Union, who briefed the members from Addis Ababa on his work in cooperation with the AU. He said that today, the partnership between the UN and the AU stands out as a pillar of multilateralism, with collaboration continuing to grow in scope and depth. However, he added the conflict landscape on the continent is becoming increasingly complex and multifaceted, and in most cases, intractable. His remarks uh, were shared uh, with you. And just for the record, I want to flag that yesterday afternoon, council members heard from Carlos Ruiz Massieu, his Secretary General Special Representative from Colombia, who briefed council members uh, on the latest developments on the political mission there. Um, Update for you from the Democratic Republic of the Congo and a uh, possible case of uh, reports of serious misconduct, including sexual exploitation uh, and abuse, as well as assault by UN peacekeepers. Uh, upon receiving information that contingent members from the UN peacekeeping force in the DRC deployed at a base in the eastern part of the country were fraternizing after curfew hours, at an out-of-bounds bar known to be a place where transactional sex occurs. Uh, the UN mission's military police and conduct and discipline personnel visited the premises to assess the reports they had received. After confirming their presence and attempting to detain uh, the, mission, the contingent members for breaching the UN standards of conduct and the mission's non-fraternization policy, uh, UN mission personnel were physically assaulted and threatened by the contingent members. There's also evidence indicating a serious failure in the exercise of command and control by senior military officials belonging to that same contingent. The relevant authorities are being informed of the allegations, including a request to deploy a national investigation officer to investigate jointly with OIOS from the UN. Any identified victims will be referred to for assistance in line with the UN's comprehensive strategy on assistance and support to victims of sexual exploitation and abuse. The UN peacekeeping mission in the Congo, MONUSCO, remains committed to ensuring the highest standard of conduct among all personnel and to enforcing the Secretary General's policy of zero tolerance towards sexual exploitation and abuse and the UN standard of conduct. Um, it, uh, after we are done, you will hear, of course, from Monica. Then at 1.30, there will be a briefing here by the Special Rapporteur on torture and other cruel, inhumane, and degrading treatment of punishment, uh, Alice Jill Edwards. Tomorrow at 11 a.m., there will be a press conference by Mary Law uh, Lawler, the Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights Defenders, and Clément uh, Nialetosivule, the Special Rapporteur on the Rights of Freedom of Peaceful Assembly and of Association. As you know, they're all here to brief the third committee. Uh, Maggie, uh, that's uh, that is tomorrow. tomorrow. Tomorrow, in this very room, here. Margaret Bashir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Steph, any updates on negotiations for humanitarian corridors uh, in and out of Gaza? No, um, those discussions are, um, are very much ongoing uh, at different levels. The Secretary General is continuing his phone 
diplomacy and uh, his uh, his uh, envoys, notably uh, Mr. Venislan, is continuing uh, to um, engage with all uh, relevant actors. Can you tell us maybe what other countries might be involved in these discussions with the UN? Not at this point. Uh, Deji, then Pam. Yes. Uh, first, do you have any updates who whom the Secretary General have spoken to since yesterday uh, noon briefing? Uh, he spoke uh, to um, he spoke this morning to uh, the Foreign Minister of uh, Oman, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, the Syrian state media reported that Israel launched. Uh, missile strikes on the two main airport, which is uh, which are Damascus and Aleppo International Airports, and both are out of service. Uh, is is that, that can can the UN local team con confirm this? Okay, uh, first of all, I stand corrected and I uh, apologize to uh, our friends in Oman. The Secretary General spoke to uh, His Majesty Sultan Haitham bin Tariq, uh, the Sultan of Oman. Uh, on Syria, yes, we've seen uh, we've seen these reports of of hits on on Aleppo and um, and Damascus airports, uh, which are extremely worrying, especially in light of the, of the the warnings and the concern of the Secretary General for an escalation uh, an escalation of the um, of of the tensions and the conflict uh, that we're we're seeing. We're, he's calling on all concerned uh, to avoid attacks that could harm civilians and damage civilian infrastructure. He strongly condemns all violence in Syria and urges all parties to respect their obligations under international law, recalling that civilians and civilian infrastructure must be protected under international humanitarian law. Uh, you know, I think the we're at a time where of uh, these high tension where any uh, any any miscalculation I think could lead uh, to a uh, to a broader uh, to broader violence in an already volatile region. And I would also add um, that uh, the um, the fact that the airports uh, Aleppo and Damascus are not uh, are not functioning. Uh, that will have a temporary halt on the UN's humanitarian air service, which operates out of those both airports uh, to service uh, the Syrian humanitarian programs. Pamela. Uh, thanks, Steph. Uh, any updates on the Rafa crossing? No. Uh, no negotiation? I mean, I, I know. I, there's, as I told yeah. Maggie, the discussions are going on. I have no updates. On Not just humanitarian. I mean, just to get. Yeah, I have no. Yeah, okay. there's no no change that I've been that I'm able to report. And on the 3 p.m. UNDOF, the meeting. What 3 p.m. UNDOF? There's a 3 p.m. closed consultations today, um, which would involve Sir, the, the um, ceasefire. I believe our peacekeeping Syria. colleagues will uh, brief, but I'll um, I'll find out. Given the news yeah, of I Syria, understand. okay. Yeah, I understand. But you think someone will brief? I, I, I don't. I oh, need to okay. find out. You're 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 telling me something. Usually, I try to tell you things. Today, I'm, <laughs> you're telling me something. All right. Thank you. Um, um, yeah, I think it's a. Uh, from what I'm told, in fact, it's a uh, regular meeting on troop contributors. Uh, Nabil, then Linda, then Yvonne. <clears throat> thank you, Steph. Uh, the Prime Minister of Lebanon just said that uh, the government of Lebanon sent a complaint letter to the SG. Has the SG received it? Uh, I haven't seen. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen the letter through the regular channel. It doesn't mean that it hasn't been uh, sent or seen. But will and it, it, these letters usually tend to be circulated quickly as documents for Security Council and the GA. But I will check for you. And uh, yesterday, the Palestinian PR said uh, for the humanitarian access to be activated, there is a need uh, for the bombing to stop. Uh, do you That's agree? That's what I said as well. So, uh, I mean, yeah. So, can you give me? An so, I mean, that, that's what I. I mean, it. It. it it's clear that mm. you. You can't operate. Uh, you can't have the humanitarian access you need uh, when the bombing is continuing, and that's why we've we've asked, we've called for for a halt to this uh, to this cycle of violence that we're seeing. Two more, please. Um, 
Does the UN have uh, contingency plans to shelter the IDPs in uh, Gaza, uh, people who, who, who lost their uh, homes and uh, well, now Well, I mean, well, you know, uh, sadly, this is not uh, the first time the people of Gaza have suffered. Uh, not at the, uh, I think, not at the, um, at, at the rate and the intensity we're seeing. Uh, but as, you, as you've seen, UNRWA has uh, a, a well-oiled system to provide uh, safety in as much as it can um, to tens and tens of thousands of, of people. Uh, so this is, this is what they do. But it seems that UNRWA's school reached their almost I mean, we're, capacity. we're close to, to I mean, I, I, I can't tell you they've reached capacity. I don't know what exactly the capacity uh, is, but uh, I'm sure we're close to it. Can we get uh, like an assessment when will yeah, be I, this I will try, I will And try final to question, do you have names or uh, at least the nationalities of honor was uh, employees who were? Uh, My understanding is that they're all Palestinians. Thank you. Yeah. Names? No names? I, I will give you the, I think UNRWA has released the names, I will make sure we, we circulate them. Is, is, if we have all of them, is obviously there's notification that needs to take place as well. Uh, Linda, then Yvonne, then Sherwin. Uh, thank you, Steph. Um, this is regarding the food, electricity, and water that's being blocked from entering uh, Gaza from Israel. My question is, is that I had read, or my understanding is that about a third of the electricity was being provided from other sources, and so two thirds of the electricity is missing. What's what's the um, comparison in terms of food and and water? How much of that, you know, does is inside Gaza no matter what, and how much is the um, how much are the Israelis holding back? Percentage. I I, I I'm not able to give you. Uh, the numbers. What I am able to tell you is that nothing is coming in, and what's in is dwindling very, very quickly. I mean, when the, the main power plant can't produce uh, electricity, it has an impact on desalination, it has an impact on, um, on, uh, on sanitation, uh, as we've seen. Uh, some water was being produced through desalination plants, some water was being uh, brought in through commercial services from uh, from Israel, all of that has uh, stopped. We can't underscore enough the dire humanitarian situation that is getting direr and direr uh, every day, if not by the hour. Um, Yvonne, then Thank Sherwin. you. Um, nothing is coming in, as you've said. So, but you can't put a number of days, hours on how long the UN operations can last in the current circumstances. No, I mean we have. You know, it, it's uh, there. There was a regular stock of of supplies that were that was in uh, yeah. that we that we keep at a certain that our agency colleagues keep, whether it's food, fuel, water, whatever. Those. Uh, those stocks are dwindling very quickly. I'm but not. They, a, I'm not able to um, to tell you this. We have six hours or twelve hours or or a day. It, it depends, obviously, on on the situation, okay. the way things are distributed. But do they know? Do the agencies on the ground know? I mean, can we get an answer out of them? I, I, I'm. They, I, we are not in a position to give you at this point okay. uh, a hard. A, a hard number, okay, and because if, it depends so it, on other factors. All right, and if the point is reached that they do run out of essential supplies, food and water, what is the plan then? Is the is the UN going to leave Gaza? What what well, is? We're not. We're, what, we're not. I mean, we we have you know the more than twelve thousand uh, UN staff just for UNRWA. Vast majority are are Gazans, are Palestinians. They, they're not leaving. We're not abandoning. Uh, Okay, so what yeah. happens if, if, if I, the well? If the I, I think you could, out? you could, I think one can, you can imagine uh, what will happen when the supplies run out. Sherwin, thank you. Uh, yesterday, the Secretary General expressed his deep regret at the deaths of UNRWA staff in Gaza. That number, of course, has gone up to twelve. Is deep regret the official UN position uh, in reaction to the killing of its staff by Israeli airstrikes? Well, the Secretary General said said what he said. Uh, it is uh, unacceptable 
that uh, UN staff uh, lose their lives as they're trying to either seek safety or, more likely than not, trying to help others. I mean, there have been instances where the UN condemns the killing of its uh, I mean, staff. Why is there no you know, condemnation? I've said, I've, I've, I think I've said what I've uh, Also, on the, on the humanitarian corridor that's being proposed, will that corridor allow Palestinians to leave Gaza? What we're working on is increased humanitarian uh, access. We're, we're not there uh, now. I don't want to get ahead of what can be agreed or what will be agreed. Uh, our focus right now is on getting much, much needed supplies into Gaza as quickly as, as possible. But are you saying there is a recognition that if there were to be, for example, a ground invasion, of Israeli troops into Gaza, that this is going to become an untenable situation for it, civilians it, it, on the I think we already are at an untenable, we're, we're already are at untenable situation. People need to be able to, uh, people anywhere need to be able to move to find safety. Dulcie, and then I'll come back for round two. Thanks. Uh, of the 12 Palestinians killed uh, who are uh, UN officials, uh, do you have a gender breakdown? I do not. Uh, I will try to get one for you. And also in the readout from your um, briefing yesterday, the transcript it, uh, enumerated who uh, Secretary General has spoken to, which leaders across the region, but I didn't see any reference to speaking to any U.S. government leader. Has, has any U.S. official been in touch with Guterres? Uh, we have. The, the Secretary General has uh, continued his consultations here with uh, critical ambassadors, uh, including for all the P5, which includes the United States. And um, Mr. Venislan is also speaking to his American counterparts as part of his other uh, phone calls. But, but nothing with the White House or Secretary of State? No, I've just said what, I've just told you who he's spoken to. Um, sorry, let's go to uh, the screen. Abdel Hamid. Okay, I tried. Um, Ma no, sorry, Maggie, then Pat. <laughs> uh, Steph, just on uh, UNHAS flights, are there any flying into Israel proper from no, no, any these, of your these hubs? Are the, the UNHAS flights in Syria are part of the Syrian humanitarian program. No, no, I'm not asking about Syria. I'm just saying no, no, generally the in the region, because, like, for instance, Dubai is a hub. So are you trying to continue... Uh, pre-positioning some supplies in Israel to get into Gaza eventually, or in Egypt, or somewhere. No, I mean there there are uh, reports that the um, the the Egyptians have allowed a number of international flights. Uh, I think from from Jordan uh, and other places into Al Arish Airport. Uh, our you know our humanitarian hubs in uh, we have a number of humanitarian. Uh, warehouses in the Gulf, uh, so we'll have to see where the supplies can come in, but we can move things pretty uh, pretty quickly so once we can. So for now, all UNHAS flights are grounded into Israel? I mean, there's no un there were no UNHAS flights into uh, Israel. Israel. A before. lot of the goods, I, uh, from my understanding, come, uh, come by road. Uh, it to some, and then Pam. Uh, I didn't, um, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but because I didn't see any numbers about uh, the number of uh, civilians uh, did, uh, uh, Palestinian civilians did uh, from the Israeli airstrikes. No, I don't have, th those numbers were not provided to us today from OCHA, but we'll see what we can get from you from our own sourcing. Okay, and, and then I saw some uh, news reports about uh, that there are about 1,500 um bodies of uh, fighters that uh, from the uh, Hamas fighters from Saturday in Israel. Um, so what should happen in this case? Like uh, how is this like how this should treat it? According to I, I, I don't know if that's the, the correct number. I think as a, as, as a matter of principle, we've said this uh, before, I think once the fighting stops, and this goes to, applies to anywhere, people should return human remains. Uh, Pam, then Nabil. Uh, thanks, Steph. Um, there was a um, 
letter of sorts, a statement put out by OHCHR this morning um, on condemning, deploring the attacks on civilians and also calling the Israeli strikes um, collective punishment. Um, but did condemn uh, this was from independent experts, yes. not from the not from the office of the e high commissioner. Exactly. Um, since he's not since he canceled today, um, I'm asking you: Does the Secretary General um, agree with this statement? Is he on board with the same? It, it's not for him to agree or disagree with what Special Rapporteur said. I think his his calls on for the full respect of international humanitarian law, for not use, for not blocking uh, critical supplies from going in, uh, from asking for a stop to, to what is going on, I think have been very clear. But specifically, they mentioned collective punishment no, I know, that, as a And I think I've, I've answered the, okay. I've answered All the right. question. So that's not part of your... Uh, they're independent experts, not for me right. to, okay. to do a Thank comment you. on it. Uh, Nabil. So have, uh, have you or has OCHA or any other UN body uh, mobilized um, any resources to Sinai? Area? Any what, sorry? Any uh, food or uh, I, I uh, think aids we're, to we Sinai? are in touch with our Egyptian, uh, Egyptian colleagues and to see how, you know, once things become clear about access to Rafa, but we can, as I said, we can move pretty, uh, pretty quickly especially given that the Egyptians have cleared the use of a, of a major international airport so close to the southern border of Gaza. So nothing has arrived yet? As far as I know, uh, I know they've, uh, there have been a couple of humanitarian flights from Jordan, I think another country, uh, but I will let you know about what, what can move uh, from the UN side. And maybe final question, uh, the uh, US Secretary, uh, Mr. Blinken, uh, just started his uh, uh, trip uh, in, in Israel. Uh, what would the SG hope that uh, Mr. Blinken can achieve at this point? A, an, end, an, an end to the suffering that we're seeing right now. Okay, Yvonne, uh, then Ephraim. Can I and ask then, please about the, the DRC sexual misconduct yeah. case that you mentioned? Um, the uh, how many perpetrators are we talking about it and how many victims? We'll have uh, we will have a, we expect to have a bit more detail to share with you this afternoon once the permanent mission of the country uh, whose troops were involved uh, have been uh, have been notified uh, we, they have to the, the process is that they have to be officially notified i think that will happen maybe in the next few minutes it's supposed to happen early this afternoon we're trying to be as um, I think as proactive as possible. The mission, the mission in the Congo also put out a statement. I think yesterday that may have a bit more detail. We can have, we can send that to you uh, as well. Ephraim, and then Toshi. Thank you, Steph. Just a quick follow up on Volkil Turk as well. Um, since he um, condemned the siege of Gaza as prohibited by international law, he got a reaction from Israel's PR to the UN. Uh, accusing him of making false immoral comparisons and sharing the blame for empowering um, what he called barbaric savages and giving them a free pass. He also asked him to stop talking and giving hypocritical expressions of emotion. Look, uh, I, the Secretary it? General has full confidence in Volker Turk, uh, both personally and in his role as High Commissioner for Human Rights. Toshi, then I will go. Thank you, Thank you Steph. Um, about the human corridors into Gaza, uh, have the Security General asked P5 or other uh, member states at the Security Council to talk about it and take an action to? Uh, I mean, make he's it he, you know his message to all his interlocutors, which includes the the P5 and a number of other ambassadors, is is the same. I think everybody needs to work in the same uh, in the same direction. Monica, all yours. Thank you.